Hello and welcome to the house of Valentina. I'm Valentina and today I want to talk to you about trends, home trends that I think you're going to hate this year. And I don't mean these to bash anyone or any style, but I think what we can do when we hear about things that we don't like is that it actually teaches a lot about what we do like. And so I really hope that today's video will be really helpful for you to really point out some things that I think you're gonna hate. And I don't think they're things you're gonna wanna do to your house because I think that they'll end up being things you will regret. So I hope you'll love this video. I hope you'll find it really helpful. We do home renovations and uh, room makeovers and all kinds of fun stuff. So we hope you'll wanna be a part of the House of Valentina community and hit subscribe. And don't forget to let us know down in the comments which of these trends you hate, or if it's one that you love, let us know why, because it's a great learning tool where we can all just learn from what each other loves and hates, what's worked for you, what hasn't. We wanna hear all about it. Let's jump in. Let's start off with a big one, okay? This is a really big one. Let's talk about display only homes. I just think that this is a trend just in general that I have found myself just moving further and further and further away from. I have learned over the years when I really started to really become a designer and I really put effort into it and I wasn't just decorating my house for fun, but I was really starting to design my home. It was gonna go into magazines and I was turning this into a career. One of the things that I did in the very beginning is I fell in love with display only type houses. And to be honest with you, I've never stopped loving them. I still love homes that just look like show pieces. I love this, these homes that look like an art piece in and of themselves. I still love that style. The problem with it is, is that it never feels truly like a home. And if you are this ultra chic, always in high heels with a martini in your hand kind of person and you glide through life and you don't really ever sit down on your furniture and ever watch TV or uh, you know have coffees and chill and relax, then the display only house is probably one that will still work for you. But we have a dog and we have kids and we love to have friends over and family and we love to lounge and relax together and, and cuddle. And so I think that for me, a display only home is one that just isn't, it doesn't suit my lifestyle. And I don't think that it suits the lifestyle of most of my clients. And so what I've always tried to do is create rooms that feel as though they were created to be on display and they're really, really beautiful. But there's also the element of actual livability. And so I think that that's a really key to focus on in this coming year is to look at those beautiful showroom uh, photographs. Look on Pinterest. My goodness, the inspiration that I find on there is never ending. The Scandinavians, I feel like they probably just get me the most because I see the designs that they create and I love that minimal paired back, beautiful, clean lines. It's so artsy and I love it but I need a little bit more livability. I like having some pillows on my, my sofa. I like to have a few more pillows on my bed. I like the, for things to be a little bit softer. I like blankets thrown down. And I really, for me, the biggest thing that I've learned over the years is that I really like to have furniture that's comfortable. And a lot of the display only type homes have furniture in them that are beautiful and exquisite and they are works of art truly they are architectural feats they're amazing but they don't they're not comfortable they're not anything that you can sit in and when your family comes over and you want to hang out with everybody it's the chair that no one can sit in and so I think that if you have plenty of space in your home and you have chairs that you don't even have to sit on, you have so many rooms to, to lounge in that you can have a display only room, I think that's a lot of fun and I'm up for <laughs> designing that and I love that. But for me, I found that I just really like to have something that feels a little bit more livable and that's why I think display only for this year is just gonna be out. Let's take a break for just a second and talk about a trend that I think that you guys will love and that is a home that is going to be nurturing. That is going to be a really big buzzword this year and I think that's kind of the opposite of that display only. So for me, one of the things that I think really, I think that when you're wanting to nurture yourself and nurture your home, it's all about reviving yourself and I have found in the past, I found myself getting really run down 
That's why I'd actually added Athletic Greens into my regime. And uh, they're our video sponsor for today. I really wanna thank them because this has been life altering for me. It's really helped me get a lot of the energy back that I felt like I was really missing. This is absolutely amazing. Their AG1 is a comprehensive, convenient daily nutrition with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients. It's made for just about everybody. This is really amazing because you can buy the refills if you wanna have the canister at home. You can buy the big refills, but I have found what's really been working for me lately is to actually have the little pre-portioned packets. This is so nice because you can buy them like this. They come pre-portioned, and I like to have this in the morning. You just simply fill your glass up here with 12 ounces of water, open the little packet, pour it in, and we're just gonna give it a really good shake. This is amazing. This is the way to nurture yourself from the inside out, and it's also really delicious. So just cap that, give it a good shake. And this is one of the things that I've started to do for myself because I really think that when you're trying to, we focus so often on this channel about taking care of ourselves and how decorating our homes is restorative and it changes our lives. And I think that these little things that we do, these also change our lives as well. And so I think that this stuff is amazing. It tastes like candy to me. It tastes like those little smarty candies. It's really yummy. Normally I have this right after I work out and before I've eaten because then it really helps to absorb all those nutrients. I love the fact that this is immune supporting. As I get older, it's something that I'm really focused on. I'm really wanting to be a little bit more holistic in my approach to life, just in general, that it's not just about the way that I decorate my house, it's also about the way that I feel. And that's why I wanted to be able to share it with you guys, this little routine that I have in my life that's really made a big difference. It's really helped me to just feel energized throughout the day. This has been absolutely amazing for me. It's been something that's been really easy for me just to add into my daily routine. I love it because it tastes delicious, so I don't feel like it's a chore. I actually feel like it's a treat. It also, it actually helps remind me to drink water, and I think that's really good. So uh, it's been an amazing supplement to my life, and I think it's something that you guys are gonna absolutely love. So click my link below to get one year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D3, K2, and five travel packs free with your first purchase. Make sure you check out that discount code, check it out down below, and I will leave all the details for you down below. A style that I think we should be avoiding in 2023 is the ultra contemporary. <sighs> I got really into this style. I really got into this style for a while. I've got a lot of it pinned on Pinterest. I, I like that style from a lot of perspectives. I feel like it's like the, 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 the part of me that wants to be cool, the part of me that wants to be out having dinner parties and, and you know cool dresses and great heels and carrying a pretty handbag. I don't really live that life. <laughs> so those ultra contemporary homes, I think we can learn a lot from them. I think we can take away a lot. But I personally just don't wanna live in a home that's really, really, really big and really, really empty. I, I just don't love that myself. I don't think that style is going to be really in. I think that a lot of us are really pushing back on those styles. There's people who never were into it. So those of you who are probably gonna be really vocal in the comments, <laughs> you're gonna be like, I hated that style from the beginning and I respect it. I like to look at a lot of different styles and I always learn something. So there's always something to learn from these. And so when I look at those ultra contemporary homes, I've learned a lot about two-story open rooms. I, I always look at placements of furnishings for really big spaces, uh, window treatments and wall treatments and things that you can really take from those. But I think that the, the massive, open, soulless, ultra-contemporary homes, I think you're gonna see those really going out. And in place of them, you're going to see ultra-contemporary brought into a really traditional setting and that sort of twist of things. I think you're gonna see those contemporary items mixed in in a more traditional setting. I think that our trends are gonna move more towards classic and the everlasting capsule home, those concepts that we talk about all the time on this channel about building out a home that's really meant to last for years and you're really just building upon it. I don't know that we need, we need to have, you know, at least 36 inch walkways so we can move about our spaces. I don't know that we need 36 feet. <laughs> 
between our spaces. Maybe that's just a little bit too big and a little bit too soulless. And I'm not against a big old house. I mean, I love chateaus and manors and that style is gonna be crazy. And if you watched our other trend video about trends that are going to be in, you will already know it's not the size that we're talking about, it's how we're using it. Uh, there you go, I just said that. Okay, you guys can just make fun of me, but it is how you use it. And I think that we're gonna put some more walls back up. We're gonna be building intimacy back into our homes and these big soulless open spaces. I think we're gonna be seeing some serious pushback on it. And personally, I'm ready for it. I love it. Ooh, so uh, we've been we've been uh, ragging quite a bit on the open, the soulless, the, the display only, right? Okay, so let's just rag for just a minute on the overly maximal because when we start to push into the maximal style, which is what we're starting to see, then the flip side of it is that people start to just vomit things everywhere. And there's not an inch of wall or floor or uh, space on any surface. That's when things start to become too much. And so I think that when we start looking at the style, we, we don't want to go too far with it. We don't want to make it to where you can't move around your house. I think reserving those walkways still, uh, still having more things out. You can definitely have some things out. I think having some things out, some beautiful books and some vases and some things, that's different than like, you can no longer see anything. And so when you start piling things layer upon layer upon layer upon layer, it starts to almost just feel a little bit overwhelming. And so I think that's what you don't want either. I think that we should be putting more artwork up on our walls. We should be going for a little bit more, but I think that the, the horror style, that's where things can go. If you take somebody that already loves a maximal style and you tell them that maximalism is gonna be in, they may just start piling it on even more and it might just start to feel a little bit overwhelming. I think it can also just be too chaotic and your mind and your eye need somewhere to rest. And so I think balancing some of these minimal principles with a little bit of maximalism that's what I'm really starting to do in my spaces. I feel myself where I, I'll bring quite a bit out on one area and then I'll keep it a little bit more pared back on another and sort of balancing my rooms. I feel like that is the way to go forward and avoid the overly maximal. More is more is more, more is everything. <laughs> that, that may not be what you really want this year. Okay, so according to Pinterest, mushroom decor is gonna be super in and I'm like, Really? Like, who are they pulling? <laughs> well, Pinterest puts out their trends based off of what people are looking for on their site, based off of search. So apparently a whole lot of people are searching for mushroom decor on Pinterest. I, I don't get it. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try to go there. <laughs> Just, no, no, I'm not going. I mean, I don't mind a mushroom like in an art piece or something, but I personally, I'm not gonna start collecting mushrooms and putting mushroom art up and looking for a mushroom on tea towels and everything else. I, I just don't think that that really has any relevance to a long-term home. Now, if you find something with a mushroom on it and it's cute to you, that's one thing, but I don't think that we really want to build out our homes off of these sort of, just sort of quick, Pinterest little things. I think we wanna build our home with more lasting ideas and that's definitely the way forward. Next up, we have the brutalist style. There's always gonna be a group of people that just love this style. There's always gonna be people who love all of these styles and they're always gonna be dedicated to them. But the brutalist style is all about, it's almost like a prison. <laughs> like there's no comforts. There's no, there's no, <sighs> It's almost like a designless prison. <laughs> it's, the whole point is that it's anti-comfort. I mean, I, it really is. I don't think that that style is gonna be one that you're gonna really wanna take into 2023. I, I, it's kind of like all these other ones that we're talking about that we really want the comforts of home. We want a nurturing home. We want a home that's going to be soft and comforting. It's gonna be a place that we can relax and enjoy. And the brutalist style is none of those things. It's really hard materials, it's concrete. I mean, I like spikes, I, I love those, but I just wouldn't want to like create an entire element in my home with those. I, I certainly not like a, a spiked sofa. <laughs> <laughs> That's going too far. I think that the, sometimes that brutalist style can just be a little 
brutal. And I think that maybe that one is another one that I personally just don't think we should be taking into 2023. There's just a few styles that we're just going to avoid. This is definitely one of them. This mid-century is never going to be out of style. And it's not that if you have mid-century pieces that you have to go and just start throwing them. When we lived in Copenhagen, basically, right? Denmark is, Scandinavia is like the, literally the, the, the epicenter, the home of mid-century design. We went to this place one time, it was this amazing like warehouse place. It was a huge flea market. And literally the chairs, mid-century chairs were piled up two, two, almost three stories high, just in a big pile from the ground up, just in a big heap. And I remember looking at that and thinking, oh my gosh, this is incredibly, like how wasteful is this? But nobody really wants those chairs. This is a serious problem. Uh, so I think that there's, it, it's sad when a style goes and nobody really wants it. Mid-century I think is an absolutely beautiful style. There's so many things to me that are so good about it, the nostalgia of it. They really have some great pieces. I really think that the style that we're really gonna see going out is mid-century everything. Those sort of themey mid-century rooms where every single piece in the space is mid-century. So if you have mid-century pieces, don't freak out and start just throwing them into the trash pile. That's not good. We don't want that either. I would just say that these pieces are really great to mix in with some really good, classic, comfy pieces of furniture that maybe have a little bit more substance to them. Mid-century pieces tend to be a little bit more spindly in their legs. A lot of the chairs tend to be a little, a little less comfortable if you ask me. Uh, some of them made of leather are really great, but a lot of those pieces tend to be a little bit less comfortable. I'd mix them in with a really comfy sofa. So you have some more comfortable sit and maybe those chairs are reserved for just, you know, when you're not gonna be sitting in them so much. So there you go, you guys. Those are my trends that I think that you are not going to love, things that you're not gonna to wanna to take into 2023. Uh, one of the, I'm, I'm very curious to hear from you guys about what you think about these. If you're sad, if you're happy, let me, don't, let me know down in the comments. It really helps us to hear what you are seeing in your area because you guys are coming from all over the world. One of the things that I'll definitely be taking into my year is my, my AG1. So I'll leave the link for this down below for you guys. I'm going to have the rest of this now and my coffee. And uh, yeah, it's uh, time to get back to designing rooms. And I'm so excited. I can't wait. I'm so excited about this year and all the exciting projects coming up. So I hope you are too. And that you'll hit subscribe and hang out with us. We're going to just keep chat. We're going to keep chatting about trends and room makeovers. And there's all kinds of fun stuff coming up. I look forward to it so much. And I cannot wait to see you guys in the next one. Until then, cheers. <laughs> Bye.